Hello everybody, this is Jeffrey G97 and welcome to today's episode. In this episode, I'll be covering the new GT1 at Sardina. So in this video, I'll be showing you guys how to get this car and most importantly, the build that I have for this car. And I'll also show you my gameplay through the race and show you guys my own strategy of how to get this race pretty much easily as possible uh, to complete it using the GT1. So. Without no further ado, let us get straight into the episode. So this car, of course, was launched back at update 1.4, which was this past Thursday. So for a limited time right now, and it's actually a hot car, uh, you can find us at the Haggerty Collection. It's going to cost you about two and a half credits, which I'm two and a half million credits, which I'm thankful that it's not too entirely expensive like some of the other classic uh, cars. But you can see the stats to the far right. Um, still kind of a little bit hard to believe that it's actually a grade 2 and not a grade 1. Uh, but after driving it for a couple of races, I began to finally figure out why it's a grade 2. Uh, just by the way it drives, it doesn't really feel like a grade 1, to be honest. Um, so therefore, that's why it's a grade 2. But you know, other than that, let us get a much closer, deeper, closer look at this car. And I'm pretty sure all you guys that are used to playing the first two games, even all the way to, I believe, GT4. Um, this brings back good old nostalgic memories. Um, I remember seeing this car the first time at GT3, um, and then I played, of course, GT4 as well. That I mainly played GT4 the most out of the two uh, between it and GT3. So this is really bringing back good old memories from those two older games from the PS2 days. Um, so I'm really glad that it's actually here in the game. Um, even though I felt it probably should have been here way longer earlier uh, than it is right now. But hey, at least we got it. And hopefully some of the other iconic classics, hopefully they'll begin to also uh, add to the game as well. Of course, the blue and white Toyota Minola. That's another one of my favorites I would love to see in this game. So hopefully, if they can bring this one, then surely uh, they can bring the other one, which I'm hopefully they do. Um, but yeah, that's how you get the car at the Haggerty Collection at the Legendary Car Dealership. Now let's, let's move over to the setup that I'll be using for this race. It's actually a pretty interesting setup. Um, so for starters, we'll be using racing hards uh, as our tire choice in this race, uh, which is a little bit strange than usual of tire choice I usually use at Sardina, but we're going to use hards uh, as our tire choice. And what I recommend you guys doing is pause and feel and just mainly copy uh, both what I have for my suspension, also what I have for my differential as well, uh, because they'll really help out the car as a lot in that race. Uh, for aerodynamics to front, you're going to have it set to 500, so that's all the way down to the bottom of the bar. For the rear, it's going to be jacked up all the way 900 to the max. For the ECU, make sure you have the full control computer equipped and set that at 96. After that, you're going to need to buy ballast uh, and you're going to have it set to 95. And then after that, you're going to get the fully customized manual transmission. And you're going to set that at 370, uh, no fine tune from the gears. Uh, for the turbocharger, it's going to be high RPM turbocharger kit. And the last but not least, uh, your brake control is going to be level 3. Uh, toward the rear and then once the rear tires do begin to degrade a little bit what I recommend doing uh, later in the race is move it down to one if not to one then all the way down to zero um, like late stages of the race whenever you begin to feel the rear tires losing its grip uh, from the car so let's get straight forward into this race so here we are at the race we're going to be racing in Map 3 uh, for the first part of this race and uh, for the way the car looks and how it drives uh, overall, it looks very good. Um, very nice, smooth handling car for it to be a grade 2. Uh, now, with the, the way I have the car set up, it feels very flexible, but it feels a little bit light and a little bit free in the rear of the car. So just keep that in mind uh, that there are some times that the car actually will kick out um, just a little bit, or it will kick out majorly uh, depending on how much uh, throttle you put back into the car in the corner uh, but you can see we're making a little bit slow of a progress uh, through the field you see we actually have to save it right there uh, but the long stretches are of course the main biggest part of this car that's mainly its strength uh, in this race I can see we're making some spots passing the Ferrari and we're up to getting close to the RX Vision and the Corvette as they're racing pretty hard for 12th place 
Uh, but another good thing about this car is that a really good corner for this car is going to be right here on this right hander. Uh, you can see we just really send the car through there. We're going to brake, fire ourselves right beside the Audi, make a move on the outside. A little bit loose, like I mentioned before. And then we're going to stay to the outside, trying to pass the BMW. As we, of course, touch the grass, uh, we had to avoid the BMW, but thankfully we made the pass to work. And we're going to make a pass on the RX-7. So really a good start for us, and we're going to go full throttle almost through this corner. Send it to the grass and go to the top five as we complete our first lap. So this car feels really strong uh, in this whole entire track. And with it being in fuel map three, uh, it is pretty quick around this track still. Uh, so the main thing is just make sure you hit your marks, especially your breaking points. And once you do that, and make sure you put the car at the right spot at the track. Uh, it'll feel very grippy, especially in the front of the car. As you can see, uh, took that car corner very smoothly. Uh, through here as well. Uh, I would also say probably the down part is the transmission of course having a little bit lag uh, says it's a racing manual transmission but we're gonna make a move on the outside for P4 we're gonna set ourselves behind the GTR since we got the, the straight line speed advantage we're gonna move to P3 as we move to the left side of the track and then we start sights on the Mercedes Benz GTR so right now on the podium uh, halfway to lap 2 and we're actually making some good ground on both the leader and the Mercedes as well. As you can see, we got some nice clean air separating between us and Mercedes. We'll really ruin the Mercedes very quickly. As you see right here, uh, we're going to get a nice run out of the corner. And we're going to try to make a move right about almost here. We're going to set up ourselves for the next corner. Try to get somewhat of a better run out the corner, which we actually do. And we're going to force ourselves to make a move right right here. We're going to dive it, force ourselves through the grass, and then just like that, we'll get to P2, right end of lap 2, entering lap 3. You can see we have the Viper riding full of us down the road. Uh, putting in some decently good times. Uh, they're not blistering quick, like if this was the Mazda 787B or the Nissan R92 CP. But still, you know, overall, it's, it's okay. It's decent. Um... Other than that, we're making some more ground on the Viper. And you see right there, we can see the gamer tag very clearly. Make up some more ground in these corners. Really executing the lines very perfectly. And then it's going to be right here in this left hand turn. We're going to make a move on the outside. Be about half throttle. The car actually grips a lot better than the Viper. Back on the power. And just like that, we'll grab the lead at lap 3 in, in this race. Okay, let's go ahead and fast forward to our first and only pit cycle pit stop. So here we are lap 7. Uh, you can see we're actually running pretty low on fuel. We've got about, point, about 0.6 laps of fuel left. So we're actually going to go in full critical save fuel mode. Um, so we got about literally about half a lap of fuel left in this car. And we're going to try to do our best to really stretch out that fuel. Uh, so that way we can make it pit road and not really lose a lot of time. Just in case if we run out of fuel and just have to coast. Um, so what I'm going to do here is mainly try to do this. I haven't really changed my driving style at all. I might have to early shift like you see me doing right now. Uh, that way I can limit the revs of the car. We're also going to pretty much race a gear higher uh, in some of these corners than what the game is suggesting you to be in that particular corner. Uh, so for example, for this left hand to turn, we're probably going to be probably coasting in gear 3 rather than being in gear 2. Um, that way, just so that way we won't get as much RPMs. Now we did get a little bit loose, but thankfully we did save it. Um, but you know, so that way we don't have to worry about the, the RPMs revving so what up, and then you know, trying to keep the revs as low as we possibly can, so that way we can actually go a bit further. Um, you can also coast. You can also do that too. You can also lift off the gas earlier into the corner when you brake. Uh, that's another way to save fuel as well. But of course. Putting your map setting to 6 is mainly the best way to save fuel, but there's little tricks here and there you can do to really stretch out your fuel. You might lose a lot of time, but it's a lot better to do that than just being stranded in the middle of the track and just, you know, losing so much precious time uh, just because you ran out of fuel. But anyway, we able, we did overall a decently good job. Now we're going to pretty much coast right here, so we actually are losing a couple of seconds uh, just because we they didn't really did the best job of saving fuel. We probably should have entered in more of a fuel safe mode earlier. That would have been pretty much a big help. So we're going to go ahead and 
don't change the tires. We're going to keep them as he is. Uh, you can see we still got a good bit of life left on the tires, and the car actually felt pretty decently smooth still. Uh, I really couldn't tell anything different other than, of course, the rear of the car snapping out from time to time. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and add fuel. Now what I recommend doing is adding your fuel all the way to 100%. Uh, that's what I recommend doing. You could stop it shortly after passing the icon, but I would recommend just filling it all the way up. So that way, whenever you move it to fuel map 1, you can make it go all aggressive uh, from that straight forward. So here we are on the special onboard camera. Uh, this is going to be our hot lap through lap 13 with the cockpit cam. Um, so very special indeed. So we're going to brake right as we get close to that 100 meter side. Make sure those right tires are not blue tarmac. Uh, Cutting kind of left hard and then about halfway to apex back on the throttle. Full throttle through this whole corner, you should be about fourth gear. And after you pass that 50 white sign, uh, third gear, then you'll be going down to the second gear. A quick left right motion as well. Make sure those right tires are close to that curb. Uh, after that, get the car straightened out. You'll be going to third, then fourth gear. Then we're going to be braking after we pass that blue second sardina sign. Second gear through here, even though it's probably be best if you'd be in third gear. Um, as we go through this, one of our two longest straights of the track. But as we go up the hill, we should be right at fifth gear, pushing right at over 180 miles per hour, and we should be breaking right after that 150 meter sign. We'll go all the way down to the second gear. I recommend those right tires touch that stone curb, and once you get the car straight out, same thing. Make sure those right tires touch the stone curb as well, just for a little extra support. Going down the hill, we're going to go that very swift right hand left. We're going to break as soon as we're close to that wall. Third gear. Make sure the right tires hit that stone curb again. Fourth gear, and we're going to brake once we're close to that 100 meter sign. Second gear, uh, left handed, tricky left hander. Make sure the right hand tires are at the stone curb as well. And then for this right hander, just go full throttle and about lift off the throttle a little bit. Or you can just shift early to fifth gear, just like that. And that's going to be how I lap through Sardina as we're going to do a 132.491, uh, which is pretty quick. I feel like I could do a little bit quicker. Uh, as soon as we get to lap 14, we're going to actually switch to field mode again. Uh, we start at number 3, but I really didn't feel too comfortable about it, so we're actually going to move it to number 4 um, during the lap because we want to try to finish this race without having to worry about pain again. So we're going to do the same thing we did when we had to come in on lap 8 for that pit stop. We're going to try to do our best to save fuel as much as we possibly can uh, in this whole stint. Uh, as we are going to face some back markers as well. You see we're in third gear and you can see the car actually does a lot better uh, in that corner if we stay in third gear than if we did be in second gear. Uh, so it's little things like that you can pick on um, figuring out what gear to be at on certain corners and when you find that special sweet spot gear uh, you can really make up a lot of time. Also it makes the drive a little bit more comfortable as well um, as we're getting close to the other back marker. We can see we're we're getting close to that time where we might not have enough to make it through the race. Um, so it's a little bit a little bit stressful right now. Um, so as we're about to start our very last lap into lap 15, we'll most certainly be moving it again to level 5. And hopefully that will be good enough uh, for us to use that to finish off the race. Uh, but other than that, I think that for all this is a pretty good strategy overall. But I think it will be better if you actually race in field map 4. Um, rather than just few maps three, that way it'll give you much better guaranteed and a little bit more fuel saving control uh, than just do this. We're going to fast forward now to the end of the race as we're in lap field map five, and you can see we're very close to uh, being completely empty. So as we cross the finish line for our total time of the race, which is very decently good, it's going to be 24:02 as we coast to the finish line. So a little bit faster. Been my best run using the CLK. The CLK did a 2407, while this one did a 2402. But if you don't count the times I coasted, uh, the lap I had to pit, plus there was one part, one lap actually was held up and then made contact with a certain car, losing some time uh, since we had that damage. Uh, if you also, if you really know strategy very well, like race map four, and don't have to worry about saving fuel after that, then certainly you'll be able to go below 24 minutes. So we kept the car clean, despite we made some contact early with AI earlier, and that is going to be it for this episode. So really enjoyed driving this car at Sardina. It's a very smooth, easy uh, pick 
or a sardine, which I'm pretty glad for. Uh, might be a little bit on the slower side, may not be as quick as the grade ones, uh, like the 7 b or the R92 CP, but this car still can get the job done. Plus, if you're not a big fan of having pit twice, um, or if you're not a big fan of the using Suzuki Skudo, since that car you have to pit three times, uh, then maybe this car would, would be a really good car for you to use. That way, just stay on Fimap 4, pit once, and then actually pit that one time, just crank it down to Fimap 1, and just go all the way aggressive uh, to the end of the race. So, really enjoy driving this car at Sardina. It felt really good. Um, so hopefully this will help you out at Sardina, and hopefully you guys will enjoy this build as much as I did um, at Sardina as well. And if you guys are curious and would like to check out my last episode I did at Tokyo Expressway, using the, na the new Audi R8, you can click on the field right about there in a little bit. Um, hopefully that field will be a big up to you too as well if you decide to use that car for Tokyo Expressway. And if you guys are interested and would like to actually follow along the channel, why not go ahead and subscribe to the channel as well. And hopefully you guys will have a great rest of the day or night wherever you might be. And like I said, hopefully this will help out. Also that Tokyo build as well. And I'll see you guys later. Take care.